What is happening, Missouri Nation? Jason here. We are wrapping up this 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. It is getting so close. Thank you to everybody who's just been playing full out. If you've been enjoying this, there's so many other great series coming up after this. But as we're getting ready to close here in the next couple days, I need to ask you a question. Are you a lean of peak or a rich of peak kind of person? Let me know in the comments below and let me know why. Let me really explain what I'm talking about. Are you operating your aircraft at an exhaust gas temperature that is what's said to be lean of peak EGT, exhaust gas temperature, or slightly rich of EGT? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we can get more into the science of it and everything else, but if you don't know what I'm talking about too, that can be a dangerous place to be as well. In fact, a really dangerous place to be is just to go off general rules. Hey, operate at lean of peak. Well, you can't just tell people generically, hey, just lean of peak is best. You can't make a blanket statement like that because first off, you need to consult what does the manufacturer of your engine recommend as well? What does the POH say? Are lean of peak operations even approved for your engine for starters? And then do you have the proper equipment on board your aircraft to even be able to judge, am I lean of peak, am I rich of peak? With, even without an EGT monitor, that's a really hard task to come by. We're spoiled with 23 Mike Zulu. You know, we have the EI for everything that really shows, like, kind of show you what it looks like as we lean everything out here. And you can see as we get our, get everything down, get those exhaust cast temperatures to a lean of peak. And what are some advantages of lean of peak? Well, lean of peak, oddly enough, I can run my cylinder head temperatures much cooler in a lean of peak environment. I end up saving more fuel in a lean of peak environment. I can sometimes, um, I lose a little bit of power. That's not always the case. There are lean of peak environments where I can still maintain my 60 or 65% power, whatever that may be. And then there's the rich of peak side of things that people say, hey, rich of peak, I get more power. I get better performance. And all of those things may be true. You can't just go out on any internet forum and say rich of peak is the best and here's why. Lean of peak is the best and here's why. It's about what's best for your airplane at the end of the day. You know, 23 Mike Zulu, we can run 23 Mike Zulu Lean of Peak. I have the monitoring to show that, but at the same time, talk to anybody at a Lycoming or a Continental and they'll tell you, hey, we built these engines to run them hard. Why do you think the break in period of a new engine is, you know, all the way to the wall for the first 25, sometimes 50 hours of that? So these engines are meant to be run at high power. They're not meant to be babied. Sometimes people think I'm babying my engine and you may not make it to TBO because you babied your engine. Yet you might run your engine hard and actually exceed TBO. Mike Bush uh, is a fantastic resource for something like this as well. I'll include some links uh, to his debates. He has some great stuff on Lean of Peak, Rich of Peak, but it, it really fits what we're talking about. You can't make a blanket statement. So if you know what's best for your aircraft, that's great. Let's have a debate in the comments as well and chat about this and see where we can really take this. I hope you're loving the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. I hope it's just been a blessing to you and everything we're looking to accomplish. Have an outstanding, amazing rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great one, everybody. We'll see you.